Okay, so, so let's analyze uh, the behavior of these scalar conservation laws and in, in two ways. First, let's analyze how the solution behaves in the smooth regions. That's away from these shock waves. And then let's analyze how does the shock wave behave. All right. So to analyze the conservation law in smooth regions, let's first write it down. Uh, let's say equal to zero. So, so that's the simplest case. We will focus on this case first. To analyze the behavior, the first thing that is very useful to do because we are looking at the solution U, right, is to apply train rule to this term. If you apply train rule to this term, what do you get? It's df du times partial u partial x, right? So this is transforming this differential equation from what's known as the uh, conservative form to what's called the, the primitive form. All right. So, and uh, uh, again, if you use finite difference, there is not, not mm, there is a, uh, it doesn't seem obvious like you want to discretize this equation or discretize this equation. Both are perfectly fine, right? But we'll see in finite volume, uh, it's, it, there is a clear, there is a clear reason to discretize one particular form of this equation. Okay. Now, if you have this equation, what you're going to see is something quite interesting, is that this is a linear combination of the t derivative and x derivative. Okay. And uh, uh, since we have been working on like a multi-dimensional mixed derivative in the project, you might be become sensitive to this. So, so what if I perform a linear combination of the derivative in one direction and another direction? What is that like? Can you represent it as just a derivative to something? Remember the coordinate transform we did in the project? Right? I mean, if you, if you are able to perform a coordinate transform, right, um, that along a certain coordinate, can I, can I say that this u is actually, uh, for example, partial u, partial c, that can be just written as partial u, partial t, plus du, d, uh, sorry, df, du, times partial u, partial x. The answer is, sure you can, if, if uh, I have partial derivatives, that is, uh, partial t, partial c is equal to 1, and partial, uh, partial x, partial c, is equal to df, du, right? So if I have this, then this would be just a, a chain rule. So how do I perform that? How do I construct this coordinate C? Let's look at the T and X plot. Okay. So partial T partial C is equal to 1. That means as I increase in the C direction, T has to increase. Partial x partial c is equal to df du. That means as I change in the c direction, x might also has to change. And x would increase if df du is positive, and f would decrease if df du is negative. OK? Right. So it turns out that the c would be exactly aligned with the characteristic line directions. That is the same directions as we saw in the contour plots. So my C direction would be the direction upward along these characteristic lines. 
and the slope would be this. So dt dx is equal to one. So that means the slope here would be be one, and the uh, and if you form a triangle, the vertical axis would be dt dx, which is one. The horizontal axis, which is dx dx, that is uh, df du. Or the slope is the inverse, is the reciprocal of df du. All right. So this would be the c directions. And another, uh, the, the other complementary coordinate would be the coordinate along this direction, right? So, so it's, it's going to be a nonlinear transform. We know the one coordinate C, the other coordinate is basically tells you which character, characteristic line you are on. So if you fix a characteristic line and change in the C direction, the partial derivative would be that, OK? which is equal to zero according to the differential equation. That is why the solution doesn't change. It stays constant along these characteristic lines. And that is why we can plot the characteristic lines as contour lines in the space-time contour. Does that make sense? OK. So basically, characteristic lines are lines along which you can form a total derivative uh, that is forming the total left hand side of the differential equation. Yes? Uh, sorry, I didn't see what we did here. Okay. So what we did here is we we constructed a coordinate system, all right, where one coordinate tells you which of these lines you are on. The other coordinate tells you the vertical height along this line. If you are able to perform this coordinate transformation, then the derivative of the solution u with respect to the vertical coordinate, the coordinate along these lines, would be equal to a linear combination of du dt and du dx that exactly gives you the left hand side of this differential equation. And if the differential equation is valid, which it is, in smooth regions, then du dx along these vertical sloped lines would be equal to zero. Right, so far so so good? Okay, so if du dx is equal to zero, I mean partial u partial c, right? By the definition of the partial derivative, as we keep the other coordinate unchanged un and only change the c coordinate, by the way, the other coordinate is which line you are on, right? So if we keep the same characteristic line and uh, move upwards along the C direction, we should expect the solution to be constant because partial U partial C to be is zero. And this is the reason why we can visualize these characteristic lines as contour lines in the space-time plot. Does 